Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, it's time for another drive time rant. And once again, this one comes from the forum that I read this morning. So thanks to whoever posted it. What it basically is, is uh, hardware versus software. And well, which one should you choose as a as a career? Basically, which one, which one, um, well, in particular, which one should he get into? Um, he's got a bachelor of uh, bachelor of computer science majoring in electronics or something like that. And um, sounds like he's got some some experience, and um, he's been getting more into the software side of things, and find that well, he found that well, he doesn't really well. I think his own words were, "I suck at it." or something like that. So he, he sucks at software and he wanted to know should he you know, start specialising in hardware or uh, can you actually master both? Is it possible to actually master hardware and software? And I thought it's a real interesting, interesting question. So let's talk about it shall we? Hardware versus software. Now I've got a new lapel uh, yet another lapel microphone it's a sony um wired one this time i'm not using the wireless so i hope the audio works fine it's a mono one i haven't actually uh chopped the lead to turn it into a um stereo one so it sees it feeds the signals into both channels that's actually a uh problem you you buy a new mic and you plug them into these camcorders all except stereo input but if you get a um, microphone with a mono plug it only feeds it into one channel and that's really annoying when you go to edit uh, because you have to actually um, duplicate the audio on the other channel to produce stereo output and it's another step and it's really annoying so generally when I get a new mic I just chop the plug off and uh, wire that mono signal so it just feeds it into both channels and I find that's just much easier than having to post process it anyway enough of that hardware versus software. Now the first aspect of that is, first question is, is it possible to master both? And well, I, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say no, because um, I do know some guys who are brilliant at both, but generally no, the answer is no, you can't master both. Um, it, it's the same with anything, I mean, you can master say, um, you know, you can master microcontrollers or something and then you can um, not work on them for five years and you can forget a lot of stuff. And um, same with software as well, you can be an excellent programmer, but if you don't, but then if you go on and do something else for five years, you can, you can lose a lot of your skills and it takes some time to pick them back up. So, or the, or the tools change in that time, which is another uh, common thing you know the industry shifts and all the tools change and things like that so you know basically no um, I don't think you should try to master both hardware and software um, but basically uh, pretty much everyone in electronics design these days should be able to do at least you know some software some microcontroller software in C or something like that or maybe even a bit of VHDL or you know but you should be able to you know do some programming even if you suck at it um, like this guy said and um, and sometimes I suck at software too I'm you know I, I think I'm, I'm reasonably good at um, uh, C I think in you know embedded uh, environments and I can do PC software in Visual Basic and stuff like that but I you know anything more advanced all this latest web uh, stuff you know databases and web and uh, Java and you know all these weird sounding names for all these web enabled application programming languages or scripts or whatnot I, I have no idea zoom straight over my head really um, so you know there's I don't think there's any way that I'm gonna master that so I'm not even gonna try um, so pretty much I stick to, personally, I just stick to, um, uh, you know, hardware with, uh, with a bit of, you know, embedded plain vanilla C thrown in, like um, C++. I, you know, I have no idea about, you know, object-orientated programming. I suck at that too. So I'm not going to try and master that. Because, 
The problem with um, trying to be very good at software is that there's so many geeks out there and nerds who are graduating with computer science degrees and you just won't be as good as them. They're just brilliant and there's so many of them and they flood the market. So, you know, if you try and specialize in software, you have to be really, really good and really, really talented at it, I think, anyway. So, that's important. Um, and if, you know, if basically uh, this guy on the forum said, well, you know, I pretty much, you know, suck at it, I'm not, I realize I'm not very good at software. Well, I think that's a dead giveaway not to try and specialize in software anymore. If you think you suck at it, go with your gut instinct, really, um, and probably uh, switch to hardware, spend more time on the hardware. Now, here's the other aspect of the question that, um, you know, uh, what was it? Let's see if we can um, frame the question better for the purposes of this exercise, which is to um, get the, uh, is hardware, um, you know, if, should you specialize in just one particular area like PCB design or FPGAs, like focus on that area. And this guy's afraid that if he doesn't spend time focusing on one area, he'll never be a master of anything. Really, and um, and I think that's that's pretty much true. You really have to get down, dig your heels in, and do some. You know, if you want to get into PCB design, you've got to do some serious PCB designs. You can't just throw down a few, you know, triple uh, five timer chips on a board and go right. I'm, you know, I'm experienced at PCB design. It's just, you know, it's just not going to happen. You really have to get down and do some meaty projects uh, before you can consider yourself you know, competent in that particular area. And, and if it's PCB design, you know, you've got to do um, high speed PCB design, you've got to know all about signal integrity, EMI, um, DFM design for manufacturing, uh, design for manufacturability, you've got to know how the PCBs are manufactured, assembled, uh, tested, and there's, there's a whole, you know, there's a whole slew of different things you've got to know about just for peace and just become a really good PCB designer. And the same thing with um, uh, FPGAs, for example. Um, you know, you, know you, you can't just you know slap down a slap down a hundred lines of VHDL and think you know all about FPGAs. It's just you know it's not that simple. Um, but uh, once again, you can know all about. FPGAs, like I'm one example, like I know one of my one of my day jobs is dealing with many different varieties of FPGA hardware and, and designing them and laying out the board. So I know intimately all about FPGAs, but can I do VHDL? Oh barely, you know, I, I pretty much suck at VHDL. I could probably learn it a lot better and I probably should, but um, I, I realize I suck at it, so I generally try and avoid it. If at all possible, I just toss it over to the software guys um, who are, you know, who are much better at that sort of thing. And once again, if you want to master something like VHDL, for example, um, there's many ways to write really shitty VHDL code. Let me tell you, it's really easy. You know, you can, you can um, have all the experience. I know, you know, guys have been working on FPGAs for and girls working on FPGAs for you know, 10 years or something like that. They've churned out millions of lines of VHDL, but it's horrible. And the projects are, you know, the, the end product is unstable, it's untested, it's un, you know, it's not characterized properly, and oh, it's, yeah, it's just crap. So, um, so really, just to a simple aspect like VHDL, you think you can master it, but, you know, if you're not, uh, if you're not um, really, uh, you know, trained to, Oh, or you know, get experience in um, in doing meaty projects that are that that, that are uh, you know uh, actually peer reviewed and tested and stuff like that to find out if you've got any weaknesses in um, you know in actually developing VHDL, then then you might never master it. So um, yeah, hardware versus software. You know, I I think there's just so many hardware uh, so sorry software people out there that. Man, seriously, if you're on the e if you watch the EEV blog, then it pretty much means that you're interested in electronics and hardware. So, you know, to go specialize in software, I 
I would, as a general rule, advise against it. But I know there are people who actually watch the blog and they're mainly software um, software guys and they, you know, they, um, they used to do hardware or they like to keep their hand in. That's why they're actually watching the blog. Woohoo, we're going through the M2 tunnel. It's dark and spooky. I'm using um, auto exposure this time, by the way, because um, the manual exposure didn't work. It's very hard to manually expose and get me in, um, get me exposed properly as well as the bright outside sun. It's just, in, you know, it's just almost impossible. So, and I get complaints that people want to see out the window and stuff like that. I, I don't know why, really. Um, in fact, I don't know why people watch this video. That's why I would now do a podcast version and audio version of this. So if you just want to listen to the audio, you can certainly do that. So, hardware versus software. Yeah, uh, my advice to this guy in the forum is basically um, go stick to hardware and yes, uh, go specialise in one or two areas or spend, you know, six months, 12 months specialising in a couple of areas and see how you go. Um, because really, ultimately, I think I may have mentioned this before, ultimately, if you're just a real generalist in electronics, you're probably not going to get beyond the gopher level of just, you know, being the, being the gopher guy around the lab or something like that. Because ultimately, you've got to specialise in at least a couple of aspects of electronics design to actually be... Um, you know, to be valuable and to be useful. So whether or not it's, you know, whether or not it's PCB layout or, or uh, VHDL and FPGAs or whether it's embedded software and operating systems and or whether it's, um, you know, power electronics, motor drives, whether it's RF, uh, you know, um, or uh, audio, stuff like that, or, you know, system level design heck you don't even have to design electronics you can be a you know a system engineer or something like that and you can um you know more of that system level design and um things like that so yeah it's you know there's many many areas that you, you can specialize in and you should you should try and specialize in something otherwise you're probably going to find yourself um, you know, not being suitable for a particular job. Because if I'm sorting through, you know, if I'm, if I'm hiring someone for a job and I'm looking through resumes and looking through hundreds of them, you know, I'm, I'm going to sort it out, you know. If, if I need a guy who can, you know, design microcontrollers or design FPGAs, I'm going to look for that specific um, experience either in their job history or in other personal projects they've worked on. I don't, you know, I don't want to... I'm just going to, you know, if you just say, um, oh yeah, I've studied FPGAs at uni, I've done a course, and I'm just going to toss your resume in the bin, because I know you're not going to be able to do the job, right? You know, I don't care that you know about them, um, you know, it's any good electronics person should know about, generally know about, you know, a good lot of aspects of electronics, but do you specialise in it? Can you actually do the job? And, um, you know, I want examples of um, real projects that you've actually done. So, there you go. I hope that's uh, useful. And, once again, it's another stream of consciousness rant. And I have no idea if what I said was uh, comprehensible or not. <laughs> but, um, yeah, see you next time.